Master of Fire and Metal. Forsaken, abandoned to the dark, what choice but to follow the flame? Fire to tear down the old ways, burning away all fear, doubt, and weakness. Nothing remains but power and ambition. This roaring fire will always demand more. More fuel. More sacrifice. The fiercest heat to forge the hardest steel. Destiny. Rising from within the crucible. To seize the world with this fire is to see it burn first. I love that trailer. We are getting in it today. We are playing some Chaos Dwarfs today. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for Twitch. Stream Manager. I'm also looking for Twitch. I got to share it on the Discord. Uh, stream notifications. There we go. We are up. We are running. We are having fun. Let's have fun together. Neo Sumerian Dawi. You're crazy. Yeah, sorry, bros. I'm way louder than, than my. Uh... Why did I shave my head? Ugh. All right. So let's push this over. Let's have some fun here today. Oh, for those wanting to see it. Uh, oop. There's this. <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> I mean, I have no control over that. Uh, there's your new uh, menu there. You know how badass that is, right? A steadfast supporter. It's way louder than my shaved head. Ah, oh, so sick looking. Let's go to new campaign. We're going to go to Realm of Chaos. Make sure that we are on Legendary, good to go. And we are switching over to Drazoeth. Now, um, I will do, we'll do a little breakdown here of everything. I'm not gonna go through all of the campaign mechanics like I sometimes do in these streams, because I have a video that's that's up that just goes through it. Um, and honestly, it's like it's like a 45 minute video. And how come Realm of Chaos? Don't you guys wanna see the Realm of Chaos campaign? That's like the narrative campaign of the story. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I can play Immortal Empires, but I was going to do the time for Immortal Empires, and we'll probably we'll probably complete this in no time. I figure it'll take like a like maybe two three episodes, and we'll be done with this campaign, and we'll just move into Immortal Empires. I mean, it's only the only point is to do it once, right? It's a whole different campaign for for uh, Realm of Chaos for them. Another loyal devotee. Eli swinging in, starting us off with a girthy ten community subs. Oh, 
Oh, ho, 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 ho. good on you, Eli. Thank you so much, man. Extremely generous, bro. Swinging us out, starting us out strong and heavy and hard. Oh, man, Border Caller, you better say thanks. You just got yourself a, a, a sub. You too, Breezley. No grasp of Twitch economics, but what? But that was an appropriate amount of gift box icons. <laughs> Thank you, dude. That, I mean, that puts us real high up to that sub goal of 250 real fast here. Real, real fast here. Thank you very much, man. So I was going to play Zatan the Black, and Zatan the Black starts over here in the Darklands. Um, Zatan's a really cool character, and I was actually really stoked to go into him and play with him. But then I realized that most people are playing Astragoth, who starts right here, or Zatan. And the only other person that I know that is streaming is Nathan, is Great Book of Grudges, playing Drazoeth the Ashen. So I was like, you know what? I'll audible to Drazoeth. I personally think that Drazoeth is the best realm of chaos. Um, a lot of, lot of Draz on IE right now. I haven't been able to find him, but... Thanks, Shattered. Now I feel like a shithead. Uh, Drazoeth is the best uh, Realm of Chaos player, or uh, uh, Lord, personal opinion here. Now, if I'm playing Immortal Empires, I think that Zatan is the most interesting, if not the hardest, and Ashagoth is probably the best. Um, Drazoeth starts with just too many things down here. Um, not that it's terrible, I just think that the other two are probably a little bit more interesting. But I think for Realm of Chaos narrative, I mean, are we all cool with that here? I mean, do I need to, do I need to start a poll on this? There's 48 bros here checking in today. Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. Two minute poll, go ahead and answer that. I'm... <laughs> I'm probably just, I'm just I'm just gonna do Realm of Chaos. <laughs> I don't know why I even did the poll. I was like, fuck it, I'm just doing Realm of Chaos. It's my channel, motherfuckers. Because <laughs> I feel like I never beat I never beat Realm of Chaos campaigns. I never beat them. I, I have not beat the Realm of Chaos campaign once because it's kind of like eh, kind of boring, man. Like it's very cool and interesting, but I think that the execution just kind of fell a little flat. I mean, it was cool and original, and then it just kind of became like, man, eh, I guess it's okay. The, the, the realm of chaos for them is different. It's way different. It's way different, of course, right? So we'll just, uh, actually, uh, so we'll start into this. Yeah, we're doing realm of chaos. That is, by and large, much further away. Okay, so let's go ahead into this. I'm going to read the little blurb. And um, we'll, I'll mute myself and remove the camera and the sub goal <clears throat> when we jump into the other part. So, uh, in his youth, the fearsome demon smith Drazoeth lost favor amongst its sorcerer prophets, a victim of the savage politics of Sarnagrand. For this, he was exiled from the heart of the Chaos Dwarf Empire to the Black Fortress and the distant reaches south of the Mountains of Morn. Drazoeth has since risen to become Lord of the Black Fortress and commit. Did you knock over your water? Did you knock over your water, Goose? <laughs> well, I'll go check in a sec. Uh, and commander of the Legion of Asgore. From his border citadel near the banks of the mighty river Ruin. Looking again to the Tower of Fire, he seeks revenge against those that exiled him. A method for Drazoeth the Ashen to return... Wait, a method for Drazoeth the Ashen to return home now presents itself. Not as a penitent, a penitent pilgrim, but as the right, <clears throat> rightful and irrefutably brutal lord of Zarnagrand. So, let's go ahead. That's got to stop. It's pulling my eye. I'm going to do this. Why does my Steam Deck, Stream Deck just not fucking work anymore? There's that. And I'm going to mute my mic. And let's let you guys enjoy this. If you, don't, if you don't want to see this cinematic, stop watching right now. Come back in about two and a half minutes. So, I'm going to give you that second to walk away. But I'm going to go ahead and press continue here. Echoed throughout the minds of the gods. A new subscriber arrives. It fills you with determination. Power, hidden deep under the mountains. 
A liquid magic so potent, it can raise entire cities, leaving nothing but cinders and ash. Eager to exploit this power, the sorcerer prophets of Tsar Nagrund sought to reach the source of this demonic substance. The domain of their malign god, Hashut, the father of darkness. For centuries they darkened, exhausting countless workers as they delved deeper than the mountain roots themselves. Two ashen moons ago, in the depths of the darkest pit, a discovery was made. A trickle of pure power, a crimson seam divining away through the rocky layers to where her shoot dwells. And so, it was bottled in a vessel of infernal design. Rushed to the surface through the fires of industry, to the highest authority. In the council chambers of Drazoth the Ashen, it was presented. Roiling with unholy energy, its gloriously terrible glow glinted in the eyes of all who set their gaze upon it. The blood of her shoot. Far rarer than warpstone and gold, very few vials had ever been extracted from the mines. The key to limitless power. Hashut Abu, Mazuma, Zara's Darun, Akminu Izbol. Drazoth, Lord of the Black Fortress, roared to the God of Darkness. And he replied. Ancient channels etched in rock flow with molten fury. A great drill shall be constructed, forged in the dread fires of the Dark Lands, imbued with strength to bore through the bedrock and breach a godly domain. Whose will shall abide? The forge burns. The fires catch from the depths. The chaos dwarves will rise. Zana Grand. The center of power, but another grows to challenge it. For in the south lies the Black Fortress. Ruled by the exiled sorcerer Drazoth, devotee. it has recently come under threat from hungry migrating ogres. They pour forth from the mountains and should be stopped at all costs. Yet this threat will be of little consequence once the great drill is operational and fully powered. Izan Kazan Tajar Nachgrand Abdar Nurunleth Mbulma The launch site is made ready at a speed so furious, it becomes a mass graveyard for hundreds of exhausted workers. Expendable lives, for only the drill is of concern. The remaining construction must be imbued with dark sorcery, for the blood of her shoot lies not only in the darkest depths of the world, 
but in a godly domain where no mortal engine can reach it. Four dwarf relics are required, each to be corrupted in the forges of the demon smiths. Only then shall the drill summon power enough to shatter solid rock and the foundations of reality itself. As the abhorrent relics lie undiscovered, a sacrifice must be undertaken to gain Hashut's blessing and reveal their locations. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck, fuck yeah. You must complete. To access the endless supply of Hashut's blood, you must complete the dr great drill of Hashut to bore directly into his domain. Ah, oh, man. Put it all right back up. I love it. I love it. I'm so excited for this campaign. <clears throat> Let's have some fun here. Uh, to answer your question, ask a cat. Uh, technology is one at a time. Um, two big shout outs here. Uh, Flesson 19 for subbing five months in a row. Thank you, dude. If you guys don't know Flesson 19, you need to know Flesson 19. He is, I'm just going to say it. I know I cover it too, but he is the best. Uh, Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord content creator out there. He is the most knowledgeable in the game. Uh, fucking change my mind. Like, he is the most knowledgeable individual on Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Y'all need to go check him out. Uh, that one guy, you know, showing his support for the Chaos Dwarf bourgeoisie by exploiting the proletariat greenskin labors. Absolutely. Absolutely that guy, you know. Thanks for subbing up, my man. That's three, three months in a row for you, my dude. Yeah, I... Dude, Angry Kazalid is the best. And I love that they all speak it, like, all the time. They're not saying English, right? They're, they're just like, wah, 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 wah. I'm like, oh, 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 I got Klingons I'm playing with. So the, the tech tree for uh, the, the dwarfs, very first thing to do is always that. It's always that. Because by turn five, you unlock um, the convoy system. And if you do this, this makes it so that your convoys already come out at rank three and they get a lot more experience per turn. It's your first thing you do, no matter what, what lord you're playing, no matter where you are uh, between Realm of Chaos or Immortal Empires, that's your first call. But no, you cannot say, okay, queue up a technology here, then queue up a technology here. What I think would be really cool, Eska Cat, is if they did do that, but um, for every multiple technology, you have a lower research rate, um, dividing it in half and then into three. Or, or maybe even something less less impactful, uh, because that's super. Like, dude, like there there'd never be a reason to do three, you know, at that point. Um, but something like that could be really cool with them, where they have to either spend armament per turn or something like that, or or maybe spend the respective sort resource. That's something to know, guys. Like, oh, rat poison! Thank you for subbing up, man. That's two months in a row for you, bro. So each one of these is divided up military, sorcery, and industry, and that's the respective resource that it costs. Armament, conclave, and raw materials. Um, well, you do have to. <laughs> you will have to, uh, Shattered, shattered. Uh, 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 I don't know, I was going to call you Shattered Resource. But yeah, Shattered, you do have to spend your resources in these re in respective locations. Um, the And the military tech tree is divided with hobgoblins and bull centaurs and large creatures on the left. And then Chaos Dwarfs and War Machines on the right. Sorcery is pretty much civic stuff with your casting at the top here. Industry is pretty much all um, rare individual resources. Um, and then on the right, this is all convoy. So for people that want to know, and you've probably noticed this on the subreddit, I'm using a, a mod here that has better Fog of War, but I can also have another mod on toggle fog of war so now when you hover over a icon you can then hover over it again and it shows you exactly what you can build there which is sick which is absolutely sick i love it i was going to do a video kind of showcasing all of them um i don't know if this is going to crash my fucking machine or anything let's go to see if there's anything at outdoor for me i don't expect anything over here to be Yeah, I mean, to be expected, right? I didn't expect... Oh, it's it worth noting, in the Mortal Empires map, the River of Ruin has a a water jumping point to leave um, the Darklands. Nothing over here, really, for the Chaos Dwarfs. I mean, not to be... <laughs> it's not like, 
the Plains of Illusions are a place that the Chaos Dwarfs happen to frequent, you know what I mean? I don't know if there's anything, though, for cool for, like, over here. I don't see anything. Oh, Karakadron. Defaced Shrine, Karakadron Landmark. There you go. Oh, Deathblow for Infernal Guard and Infernal Iron Sworn. Go ahead and screenshot that. Oh, also there's a new search feature. And I, I, I think it's because I have something on that's bugging this out. But uh, we can switch to landmarks, find locations of interest, and like Bastion Gate, Elven Colony, Empire, stuff like that. So a lot. Of, I, this is a little buggy right now, but it's okay. I want to go to Furs. Where's Furs? Okay, that's Shrine of the Ancient. This is really, really sick. Mod should be using. Uh, it should be working. Switching Doom. I uh, since I'm playing on uh, the pre-release version. Let me turn it back on. It. Uh, Actually, I'm not going to turn it back on because the mod list it's going to give you is not correct. I just have Toggle, Fog of War, and um, Better Fog of War. Those are the two mods that I have on. And the other thing is like is a better camera mod. The, the rest won't work. The rest will just crash my uh, machine. But we're not going to keep this on. I'm going to shut this off, but I just wanted to see. Uh, there's also this tomb. There you go. And any, any other landmarks you guys want me to jump to right now, go ahead and let me know. We'll do that. Uh, but like I said, I'm not going to go through all the Chaos Dwarf mechanics like I usually do with these campaigns. I'm just going to go ahead and dive on in. If you do want to see the Chaos Dwarf mechanics, um, we do have that video that's up on the channel. I go, I go through all of them in great detail. Um, it's like a 45-minute video. It didn't need to be that long. I was high on the caffeines, and I just kept riffing. Uh, there's one for Nangao. Repurpose forges, which is pretty cool, but by and large, kind of like all their landmarks are where you would expect them to be. Sentinels here. We already saw that one. Zar Nagrin's got a pretty cool one. There you go. One big thing you're going to want to do. Uh, cog. Okay, so you want to change this. I'm actually going to. I'm actually going to stick that down, go that a little higher. So if you do this to its defaults, then the these will not remove quickly, and it'll be very, very um, annoying for you. So you want to the first thing you should do when you boot the game up, when you get 3.0, change your sticky tooltip delays. I put mine at 0.3, so it takes 0.3 seconds for this to appear. Uh, 0.35, meaning that it takes 0.35 seconds for this to stick, and then 0.1, I want this to take near no seconds to disappear. Because if you don't do that, um, then when you go to say, um, like if you're looking at a bunch of skills in a row, you can't do them succinctly. It, it, it's super annoying. So there's that. Now, what I will go into since tomorrow I put up that video, is my Drazoeth breakdown of the character. So, he's Sentinel of Ashes here, which gives him armament cost minus 10% for all unit capacity upgrades in the Hellforge. That is stupid strong, because there is a seat on the Tower of Zar that also grants that same exact armament cost reduction, and there are a number of technologies that you can take advantage of. Also, armament output plus 10%. You see all of his suitable climates down there. Make sure you can see all that. What a, what a lovely hat he has. Now, here's another. Here's some big-ass stuff with him. His blue, red, yellow line, all that stuff is pretty... Um, oh, his, his faction is easily the best. Astrogoth, though, can make doom stacks of centaur... Um, of both centaurs, and they're stupid. They're, they're just so strong. You can make it so they basically are unkillable. Indy Pride just put up a video of that today, so you guys go check out Indy Pride's video on it. His... His Doom stack has a heroic victory against Cathay. So, just to show you what the Red Line divi Division looks like, you have all the uh, non-Chaos Dwarf Infantry, you have all of the Chaos Dwarf Infantry, you have all of the range, which is nice, um, you have all of the War Machines minus the Skullcracker, you get all of the Bull Centaurs, and then everything else. So your Kadai, your Large Creatures, and then the Skullcracker, all right here. Um, everything, the blue line, nothing crazy here. 
uh, yellow line, nothing crazy here. Uh, his red line, or I'm sorry, uh, his red. It, God, Jesus, my eye. It's got an eyelash in it. Casting is forward. casting, nothing crazy there either. Arcane conduit, in case you're wondering. Um, oh, you guys didn't see that? I'll show that. I'll show that to you in a sec. I just took a look at it. Um, yes, that hover over menus for all races. That is that is a 3.0 convention. So his unique line, Towering Heights, is going to give him research rate, construction time, and cost reductions. Uh, we are Legion. This is going to get, this is huge. Armament cost reduction for increasing capacity by 25%. Upkeep reduction by 15%. And bonus versus infantry plus 15 for Infernal Guard and Infernal Iron Swarm. This includes that Regiment of Renown. Now you also get Greed of Asgore. is going to help out with income and raw material output. Masters of Hell. This one is stupid good too. Armament cost reduction for increasing capacity for Kadai units is minus 25%. And then weapon strength plus 15% and physical resistance plus 15%. Take a look at this. You take the weapon strength here. You add it to the weapon strength here. You're at 22% additional weapon strength for your Kadai just from his skills. Um, we're going to get back to that. Ashen gives him a hit point barrier, wound, and hit point increase. And then Long Years of Exile greatly reduces the Winds of Magic cost for uh, win the Flames of Asgore from 18 down to 12. So very nice. Uh, that is part of 3.0 as well. That is a that is a quality of life thing for 3.0. Do you guys want me to... I mean, I don't know all the quality of life changes for 3.0. So I can do a video on that where I cover... Okay, so... The unit cards at the bottom, that's a 3.0 convention. The sticky menus is a 3.0 convention. Uh, the landmarks is a 3.0 convention. Yeah, there's no Sorcerer's Curse, which uh, Urkar, I kind of, kind of sucks. I, I would, um, sure, Rat Poison, I, I just don't know, yeah, all of them. I, I thought it was kind of weird. I, I expected there to be something. Goku, thank you very much for subbing up, my man. I expected there to be something in the means of, uh, like, okay, uh, some sort of penalty for casting or anything like that, but they do not have any kind of Sorcerer's Curse. Um, Unyielding Command, Ashet Scales for Spell Resistance, for Missile Resistance, and then your typical Mentor. His quest items, the Graven Scepter, the Demon Spike Crucible, and then the Hell Shard are going to grant him a set that gives melee attack for Embedded Infernal Castellian and Enemy Leadership minus 5. You also get control and melee attack as well as the Graven Scepter, increasing weapon strength uh, for both base and AP damage by 25%, giving magical attacks and uh, melee attack plus 24. The Demon Spike Crucible gives him spell mastery of up to 20% for each kill made. Hey. Thank you. Over here like... <laughs> and target range plus 10% for lore of Hashit spells. Leadership 5, spell resistance 15%. The Hellshard Amulet gives Ward Save 5% for the whole damn army. And then the passive ability is Damage Reflection and Damage Resistance as long as he is in uh, melee. Oh, uh, okay. Well, Flying Dutchman, that, that only applies to the Realm of Chaos then. Which kind of, that's kind of funky, I still think. Uh, and then he has his unique ability here for the trait. Upkeep reduction for Kadai units, passive ability, Dark Renown, and then campaign movement range plus 10%. Dark Renown here gives melee attack on a 35 meter range as long as the unit has contempt. So it's quite good here. Now remember what I was saying about uh, Masters of Hell giving that 15% weapon strength and 15% physical resistance, and then stacking that with Hellish Blows, putting us up to 27%, right? Yeah, yeah, right, yes. 27% <laughs> weapon strength. Well, let's jump here into military. An earnest disciple. Uh, Demon Ford. So now they get an additional 10% physical resistance. So they've got 20% physical resistance. And now this, now they get 32% weapon strength for Kadaya destroyer units. Only the Kadaya destroyers. The Fireborn get their melee defense. So you can really stack these guys up in his army. And on top of that, on top of that, Minus 10% for increasing capacity for Kadai units. That's minus 10% there. His skill, Master of Hell. So that's minus 35%. And then this, uh, that is minus 45%. And then there is a Tower of Zar ability, which I can't show you. We'll get to it in a sec. That will make it so that he is at 55% reduction in armament cost to increase Kadai units. He is stupid strong with that. Stupid strong. He, I honestly, he's, in my opinion, the best lord. 
he, he can just stack things so heavily. Uh, the Infernal Castellan is basically just like the, uh, the Vampire Coast Boom Boom dude. Uh, he gets extra powder, and he also gets uh, restock here. And then he has a choice to go with either a shotgun or a sniper rifle. Uh, so range and magical attacks, or no range and explosive bullets. They both get dig in. This is going to give him armor and melee defense. And then it also gets a flash bomb and an in your face. So that a shotgun now has explosive missile damage plus 100% and he gets Vanguard deployment. For the sniper rifle, he'll get uh, stock speed but reduce his armor. Cinder Blast Shell which is a really high damage single shot five five use ability and then molten core here here i didn't hover over this very properly sorry about that there you go and then molten cores gives some centering attacks so it is sick a hype train is close because Del, Del daddy subbed up two minutes ago thank you very much Del. uh here are his climates i'll just go over it real quick and say it out loud frozen magical forest Wasteland, Mountain, Ocean, Chaotic Wasteland, Temperate, Temperate Island, Savanna, Desert, and Jungle. So, for all intents and purposes, all the things he's good at. Is that all suitable? Ocean, isn't there another one? Isn't there like two other ones? Like Magical Forest or something like that? Oh, Magical, <laughs> one right there, never mind. The Chaos Dwarfs go where they will. So, we are playing Legendary. I have no idea how this is going to go. I am banking on it being not fun for me. This will be my third legendary campaign I've ever played. Um, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> 30 minutes into the stream, we got into our first battle. That's pretty good timing. Usually I'm like an hour and a half until that happens. Guys, thank you so much for chump, jumping in here to jump or jumping in here today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on now. I'm doing the giveaway at the end of the stream, but I'm turning this on so that if anyone asks what the giveaway, anything like that, it's there. I'm going to just be giving away a copy of the DLC. A lot of people have said like, you know, that that's just like a cost barrier for me. So I wanted to make it a little bit easier for you bros by doing a couple of these giveaways. Um, they're not sponsored. Like the CA didn't give me the keys like they sometimes do. So this is, oh shit, let me cancel that count. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just going to put this up indefinitely. Enabled, save. Okay, there you go. So the giveaway is up, but it won't mean anything because when I actually start the giveaway, um, I'm going to reset this because that way anyone that's joined in the middle of the stream or anything like that, um, it gives me a chance to make sure that those people are actually here. Um, I'm not trying to punish anyone. Zetros, get to the sub. Thank you very much, dude. Very, very kind of you, bro. A steadfast support. I cannot wait for the better lighting mod to be updated. I'm realizing how terrible the vanilla update of uh, the vanilla uh, lighting is in this game. So we're a Legion of Asgore, so our color scheme kind of sucks. <laughs> The red's cool and all, right? It's it's like typical Chaos Dwarf, but Zatan's got the coolest the coolest uh, paint job of them all. And as we know now, too, the blunderbusses will shoot over the tops of the goblins, but will not shoot over the tops of the orc laborers. So that's worth kind of noting. Excuse me. How am I supposed to beat this beginning army, man? Like, that's not that easy here. <sighs> uh, they, uh, Scruffy Monk, they just physically can't see over them. But they can physically see over the, the goblins. I don't think they give a crap about it. They won't give a crap about other Chaos Dwarfs, so... So we want to get this guy dug in as fast as possible, so I'm going to put him here. Alright, 
My Laz Rapples are online. I'm just gonna get a quick shot going here. Oh, wasted shot, but still so cool. Wow, dude, those things got are getting ripped up by these blunderbusses. Yeah, I saw that the Lord coming in. I want him to just go fisticuffs with Strazoeth to see what that's kind of like. Dude, last guns are just going hard and heavy over here. Oh no! Remember when I didn't use my Kadai destroyers because I was just so excited to see all these things go to life? Oh, oh! They added that animation back in. They didn't. They stopped it for a bit. And the torch just got nailed hard by those uh, guys. What over here? Do the damage. Those uh, the laborers are not bonus versus large as a heads up. By all means, guys, if you have any questions, anything you want to see, anything like that, let me know. It's only one percent replenishment. That kind of sucks. Uh, that was the Kadai Fireborn. That actually, I can't. I don't think I can defeat that. Oh. Eh, can't do that. Sacrifice them. Sacrifice them to the gods. So we have a choice between making an outpost or a factory. In my opinion, outpost is the really the better one in the early game because outposts are what enable us <clears throat> to produce raw materials. And raw materials are what allow us to progress through our um, individual main provincial buildings. So I find them to be extremely important. On top of that too, they don't cost any raw materials to upgrade themselves, whereas factories do. So you just have to kind of keep those things in mind. Also, if you have not seen this, uh, buildings within the Chaos Dwarf economy require either armaments or raw materials for an infrastructure or advanced military. The rest, just gold. But there's no growth with the uh, Chaos Dwarf, which is actually very nice. I think it's okay to mix that, but I bet you at one point you'll get to one or the other. Roman, you're so cute down there. Okay, that's going to cost some gold. What do I want to make here? So the nice thing is that the landmark does give me Chaos Dwarf, so I don't need to really blitz into this as fast as possible. But the, the, this is a really sick building. Look at this. Um, I'll show you, I'll show you, uh, uh, Swedes, give me a second here. Patrol routes. Campaign movement range plus 10% all armies in local province. I love that. I love that. I'm going to make it in every single one. 20% at the top end. Goes 10, 15, 20. I love that I get a building that allows me to move faster in my own territory. Uh, here you go for the Infernal Barracks. This is in the one, oh, and the Tower of Gorgoth. Okay, let me go get that one for you. But this is the Infernal Barracks, which gives me Infernal Castellians and better ones, as well as upkeep reduction on Infernal Guard. Yes, 
yeah, so your your factories are what make armament. Your outposts are what make inf or what make uh, uh, raw materials. Um, but both can also make income too. <clears throat> income comes in spades. Uh, Tower of Gorgoth, where are you? Your uh, Shattered Bone Bay for the Flayed Tower. <sighs> Tower of Greece. I'm so to, used to looking at things on the uh, Immortal Empires map. There we go. That when I go to look at it here, I'm like, where is it? Oh, here we are. The Volcanic Deposits. The Tower of Gorgoth Landmark is Income, Raw Materials, and Workload. And then for the Sentinels, you An get this. Disciple. Oh, we've already looked at it like, like three times now. You unlock convoys at turn five. And that's why I was saying your first step is to always click this right as you start out so that you get rank three convoys on turn five. That is crucial. Okay, we're actually going to go route marcher. We don't need it though. You know, he already gets 10% movement. He gets an, an innate 10% movement, but we might as well have 15% movement. And then we'll start going into Burning Wrath and whatnot. Um, and also increase mobility. Because now we're going to have 20% movement speed. So we'll be trucking around the map here. Um, remember too, we are, are limited in our Chaos Dwarf. So we have unit caps. And it's not, what, it's not one or the other. Both Chaos Dwarf warriors count against that cap. So... Do we go with Chaos Dwarf Warriors or Chaos Dwarf Warriors with great weapons? I want you guys to decide. I, I know what I would choose, but I want you guys to feel like you have a little onus in the campaign as I usually do. Any armored enemies nearby? Uh, here, I'll just show you the map. That, that'll probably just uh, determine it for you. Uh, down here in Pig Barter, we're going to be having uh, Greenskins as well as uh, High Elves at the Fortress of Orag. And then over here, we're going to be dealing with... Uh, to finish off our location, we're going to need to fight the Thunderguts, which are uh, Ogres. And then over here in the Haunted Fortress, we have got Undead, then more Ogres up here. And then to the northwest, we have some Dawi. So you choose. Your trash units are your shields, brother. <laughs> that's, that's good. Great weapons and gobbles of the shield. Okay. Is up. You just say his bullet to me? Um, and then I think we'll go with... Yeah, the, the defense building is great. All the way at the top tier gives us Infernal Guard, Hobgoblin Archers, Bull Centaur Renders with Dual Axes, and then a Tark. But then this guy right here, the Dreadquake Mortar, gives us... Uh, the drip quick battery gives us like a, a, a basically a splash of it. It's really sick. Um, let's go. What's our income? Is twenty four hundred. Twenty four local lord. So this one's great too, right? This gives lord recruitment rank. It's just a building that gives fucking lord recruitment rank. I kind of so when I was playing, the baby is still in the cone for sure. I'll show him in just a second here. Um, he has both Kadai and um, oh, Infernal Guard buffs, but more Kadai buffs than Infernal Guard. Um, when I was playing this um, on my own, I, I was doing normal because it's just like, you know, I, I want to blitz through turns. I want to just get a, get a mind for this campaign. I was looking at this. I kind of feel like this is one of the better things to make in the early game for the casualty replenishment. Yes, this does give me 250 income, but without having to worry about growth, it frees up my, <clears throat> my uh, minor settlement economy, which I really like. But I feel like getting casualty replenishment in Legendary is, is like, so crucial. Thoughts, opinions, hot takes. Give me what you guys think. Um, building, okay, that's over there. Do any of the heroes give replenishment for dwarfs? 
I think the Tarak does. No, it's training with the Tarak. I think the Sorcerer does. If anyone's watched, uh, anyone plays Zatan, <clears throat> Zatan starts with the Sorcerer. Here he is. Here he is. The cone monster. Oh, I know, bud. I know. Those pills are going to kick in. You're going to go right to sleep. Castellian has movement. Bull has training. And I think the sorcerer... Uh, oh! <clears throat> uh, local armies and province. My furry lamp. Thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Zetros, thank you very much for giving out that community sub, dude. I, I don't know if I thanked you or not, but thank you very much, brother. I, dude, guys, it's, I, I've been like spracked out. I'm so fucking amped up on this DLC. Well, you're going to be moving in here in the mountains a lot, so... <clears throat> Chorfed out for sure. Let's just go with... Uh, And this one is armies in local province, which is pretty nice. Um, 250 raw materials. See, the one thing, too, you have to really kind of balance in the early game is, like, what you spend your raw materials on. Um, what, buddy? Yeah, so what I really like about the, the Chaos Dwarf campaign, let me end the turn and I'll talk about this. What I really, really like about the Chaos Dwarf campaign is that... Okay. Okay. Christ. Um, is that it breaks the mode of playing campaign. I don't have to just simply go, okay, growth, defense, income in all my minor settlements. Since I don't have to worry about growth and I don't have to worry about that mechanic as a whole, I just do whatever the hell I want. You do need to really worry about control. Control is crucial because uh, when you control tanks, you have labor loss per turn. So you really want to make sure you uh, deal with that uh, sufficiently. Let's go Shattered Bone Bay. Hey, Mukiwa, thank you. Subbing up yet again. Let's push up over to here. And let's recruit. There we go. Pop into the Hellforge. We're going to increase our warrior. Yeah. Because we got the armor. No, yeah. We'll just do it. So now we've unlocked. And if you didn't know, this is how this works. So these numbers total together, right? In here. So 3 plus 1 plus 1 equals 5. And as you move up this, <clears throat> you unlock all of the respective runes to be used in the manufactory. So now that we've done this one, we now have the passive ability of Frenzy. Remember, this is retroactive. So by pressing this button, it's going to cost me 16. So you take the cost of the rune and multiply it by the total amount of currently recruited units. That creates the armament upkeep for the amount of runes you want to use. So for example, if I were to use Rune of Frenzy and Rune of Sundering, that would put my uh, per unit cost at 20, thus making it so that with two, I would be at 40 total armament. Is there a code we need to order when buying the DLC through you, or does it automatically recognize it's from you? All you need to do is go ahead and... <sighs> Let me get that for you. I don't know what I have. Timers. On a timer? Here you go. You would just oh there you go, it just Vesher there you go it just it just made a spam in the in the thing here. But I'll do it one more time. So you just go ahead and use this link, and it will directly purchase the DLC. It'll give me credit. I get ten percent of your sale. Uh, no, I get actually I get fifteen percent of it, but you get ten percent off. If you want to wait for the DLC to come out and you want to wait for my review, there's a review embargo. I cannot give you my like I rate this fifteen out of fifteen or whatever it is yet. <clears throat> um. Just wait if you want, man. Like, there's no, there's no, uh, um, that 10% off lasts for a week after launch. 
So if you're on the fence, go ahead and wait. Um, without giving a full review, I can tell you this is probably one of this is probably my favorite campaign pack. Fifteen out of fifteen must buy. I've really thought about how cool it would be to make a media company of some sort. And by media company, I mean like a like a GameSpot or an IGN. <clears throat> and the whole premise of it is like transparency. <clears throat> you boot up a review from us. And the review at the top says, hey, because we live and die by ad revenue, we've placed all the pertinent information, such as the pros, the cons, and the total score, right beyond this point in the page, because this is what ma we found maximizes our ad revenue. You can click. You can click here to immediately jump down to that point in the page. Boom, done. Or hey, you know what? Uh, <clears throat> we've been sent this copy of the game, and we are reviewing it. We can tell you 100% with transparency, we were not paid to give this number, we were paid to cover the game. And this this review is unbiased in the sense that it was just a, a, a given to us copy or whatever. Like, it's why whenever I do videos, I always try to front load um, the information. Like, hey, here's all the video, here's all the content in the video. If you don't wanna watch it, leave. Like, that's it. Like, I'm not trying to be an asshole, it's just like, one of the worst things that I experience personally, like, okay, I'm watching like uh, build guides for last epoch. Yo, I don't give a fuck about your first three minutes of your video. It's why I never want my intros to be longer than a minute and a half. I want you to have the pertinent information. I want you to know the quick little like housekeeping things of like, follow me on Twitch, check me out here. Here's how you support me. Let's get into the video. And it, I, I, it's just a really bad culture that's been propagated by shitty media practices just because again some just shit tier fucking marketing bro is like dude let's just trick them let's just say you'll never believe these 15 things number four flabbergasted me like oh fuck man fuck those damn videos about fixing a pipe in the first 10 minutes is their channel life story yeah, like, <laughs> it, it, we used to make this joke about uh recipes right like cooking recipes on the internet what do we got uh Three more turns on that, and that and this shows military convoys is in five turns. So that would two and three. So we'll have to probably wait a turn. Try this one weird trick. Yeah, remember it's like, oh, okay. Well, here's how you make a chili. But first, let's talk about the life and death of a bean. Like, I don't give a fuck about legumes, man. Just get to the chili. Uh, Raya Lion, hey, I just got here. Can you start over, JK? Thanks for the content, man. Been watching it throughout the workday. Absolutely, brother. Happy to help you out, my man. I stayed here for one extra unit of dwarfs, which maybe probably shouldn't have done, but it's not like I gotta worry about much about a power curve. Have 700 raw materials. And knocking out these quests is so crucial in the in the Realm of Chaos campaign, because it really gives you a, like a huge power spike. Uh, let's knock this out too. What's that all resolve like? I mean, we lost 300 for that? Okay, in the future we won't do it. I remember when chapters came out, twenty June of twenty twenty, and I was like, "Oh, thank God, thank God!" I used to have to manually type them in. Okay, I want killing fire because it does AOE damage to the whole entire board whenever I uh, cast a spell, which I really like. If I'm going too fast, let me know. I'm, I'm spracked out on caffeine. We chose survivalist because it was our only option. Uh, actually, you know what? No, we should have gone with. Oh, that's at level twelve. So he actually has this one too, Inspiring Inferno, Immunopsychology for Infernal Units, and then Infernal Death Mask, Attribute Fear, and Immunopsychology for himself. I didn't show those off. Yeah, I've seen that, uh, Superman. Not all of them do, but then when they don't have it, I'm like, oh, this, this is dross. The, why don't they have a Jump to Recipe Card button here? I figured he'd flee like a coward. Go into the foothills. Now, I can't go into raiding stance, unfortunately. That would have been a good call. So raiding is one of the crucial ways in which you can get laborers. Um, and it's based off the strength of your army. So it's important to note that. I, I Fuck, I didn't cover that in the, in, the, in the campaign mechanics. Whoopsies. Just go ahead and take the video down. 
Zat, it doesn't seem to be too bad just yet, and we barely have any um, ranged. So that's kind of worth noting. Let's go ahead and increase this. This will get our Conclave up. We have to get Conclave up to 75 so we can access the Tower of Czar. You know what, though? Like, the front-loading thing? I'm sure there's some sort of, like, YouTube guru out there who sells just, just shit-tier <clears throat> information, right? <clears throat> but... I've been doing that front-loading thing for a couple couple years now because I hated it. I hated clicking on uh, uh, videos and just not getting the information for, for like hours, it felt like, of the video. And uh, we'll do this one. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. My, my allergies are really bad. We're in full bloom over here in uh, SoCal Spring. But someone would say, don't, don't do that because then they won't watch your video and you won't get ad revenue. Dude... I get people commenting on it and saying, hey, I sub because you did that, or hey, I'm commenting because you did that. And it's like, I'd rather have the engagement over the ad revenue. Like, the people that bounce aren't going to give me ad revenue. <clears throat> but the people that stay and they make the comment, maybe they get served an ad, who knows? Like, it's better to, like, just be transparent with the content and just just give the information up front. Or say, like, like when I do build guides, it's like, hey, if you want the whole guide, like, all, everything I cover in this guide, it's at the bottom, go here. Open and shut case. That way people can just get the fuck on with their lives, man. Okay, so we're... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That'll do, pig. <sighs> What's the docks like for the twerps? Uh, let me check it out for you. Dude, one of the most wholesome things my brother said was like, Hey, whenever time I go to bed, I just put your video I I just put all your videos on and just let them roll. Does that help you? I was like I mean like emotionally, yeah. <laughs> I was like hey, realistically if if you watched all my videos fifteen times over, it would maybe get me like eight dollars in a, in a in a month. Um, I get paid by volume and the pertinent of what I post. Dude, hear that? The sound of Helm Hammerhand? God, these are so fucking cool. I'm gonna actually scoot these guys forward just a little bit. Get into the Death Valley. I'll take some Chicky McNugs. Is this good against them? We're going to find out. I don't think it's going to be. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. It's my favorite thing about playing the Chaos Dwarfs is that I get access to LAS guns. A lot of people say that they, a lot of people have told me they watch my videos to go to sleep, and and I and I always thought that was kind of weird, but now that I've like, I I do the same thing. I watch War Hipsters videos all the time to go to sleep. They're very soothing for me. So as to be expected. Oh, I love that spell. Ogres are very devastating to the dwarfs. I mean, I would expect that, right? No oh, damage resistance, nice. Oh man, I finally forgot about the Kadai over here. I did this twice now. Sorry, guys. A steadfast support. Get the Kadai out of that fight, please. Come on, come on, come on. Pull out of that fight. Pull out of that fight. Pull out of that fight.
If we lose a Kadai, that's not good. <laughs> that's all because I'm just all like spracked out on caffeine and not paying attention. End the battle quickly. <laughs> God, it's so fun. Yeah, I'll be honest. The Kadai Fireborn are really not that great. And I think it's because they're just, they really need the line to support them. They need to be pushed in with the line. They cannot be standalone things on their own. So we're going to make this as a factory. Um, and keep in mind too, it's the same amount of effect on the province. You get labor too. Um, sacking gets you labor and then raising gets you a ton of raw materials. I didn't put that in the fucking video either. Could dying fireborn done and done on that note yeah you use them for flanking and i, I kind of was gonna do that but i didn't do it but you look at their stat line they just they've got pretty good melee defense here it's obviously being buffed up their melee attack is not amazing but you know their ap they're going to be blitzing through things um they're unbreakable and they have damage reflection and physical resistance with time spent engaged in melee. So you need to get them into melee to get like half the benefit of them. That way it doubles their physical resistance of 20%. Yeah, 54 is actually pretty rough for flanking. I don't know. I mean, I guess I understand why, why they switched it from labor, from slaves to laborers, but... So let's do three Hobgoblin Archers. And I think that'll just give us a nice amount of uh, additional... Um, just nice range damage. Um, and then we'll probably pop in three Cutthroats. And those guys... I mean, I, I think the Laborers are just fine and all. But I kind of would rather just go with the Cutthroats just to have a unit that's more reliable from a leadership and damage perspective. Um, they don't do AP by comparison to the Orc Laborers, but they're shielded. They're 140. They've got a little bit more leadership. I kind of just feel like they're a better use, uh, in personal opinion here. Um, the other two are dirt cheap and upkeep. So I think what's nice about the Laborers is if you have like, oh man, I got a whole flank of my of my empire completely undefended i got someone coming my way i'll pop a lord in that location and fill him with laborers and the laborers with a lord and a garrison dude they're gonna hold the line for sure because you just throw the laborers at them let them eat up everything and we're not gonna spend the raw materials here we're not gonna and we're not gonna do the convoy for one more turn I don't know, I got okay. And we're gonna get Ash Storm because it is great. Do you think do you think then this faction pack is worthy of taking a much needed day off work? Oh, absolutely fucking lootly. Guys, 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 bros, bros, guys and bros, bros and guys, guys that are bros. As someone who has worked many, many years in the corporate work environment, no one that you work for gives a fuck about you. <laughs> so you need to take the day off whenever you want to. Whenever you want to. You're having a bad day. Roll. You woke up feeling a little rough. Take the fucking day, man. I'm I'm in Southern California. All bros. Bros is a, a is an ambiguous term. Um, androgynous term, which I, I guess is not a term we use anymore. Is that, is that considered offensive? Sorry, did not know. Bruh and bras. I used to call them uh, dudes and dudettes. Bros and broettes. Because I just never hear androgynous used anymore. So we're going to do control increase because I want to get uh, less labor. Like, as you see here, this is going to cost us more labor, right? So we have more control, less labor is lost per turn. Loyal devotee. Okay, thanks, Rat Poison. I, I mean, I didn't know. I, I just wanted to kind of understand.
Dude, fuck it, Ryan. Then you... Like I said... Dude, like I said, like I said, like I said. Genderless is the word? Okay. Didn't know. I think a lot of people are afraid to say stuff that they don't know, you know, like, oh man, I don't want to use that word, it might be offensive. It's like, dude, if you don't know and you genuinely don't know, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> no harm, no foul right there, you know? Um, if you seek to educate yourself, then it is good. Um, Raya, I don't know if you know this, but I used to be a VP of sales uh, in a, for a the enterprise department of a software company. So I had like, I think six or seven employees at the height. Um, and no one gives a fuck, you know? Like, you have one or two bad months, they're just like, yeah, we'll just get rid of them and get a new person. And like, you, your corporate overlords look at you as either a gateway or an obstacle to profit. And whatever means that they would need to look at profit. And profit for them oh, is just a skewed fucking um, pivot chart. Someone, some, some dude was told like, yo, we need you to make a, a, a presentation for C-suite. Um, make sure you have the deck covering this, this, and this. Uh, yeah, and HR's there. Yeah, like the people that hire you, they're there to get you at the bottom dollar. They want to get you at the cheapest dollar because the number one controllable expense of any company is payroll. So they, I mean, they, all these companies laying people off, they could have done so many other things, but instead they go, well, we can just cut people and throw the workload onto a bunch of other people and just fuck them all over. Like your corporate overlords don't give a fuck about you. If you want to take that day, take the goddamn day. So on that note, <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, the, your guy, the guy that's making like, hey, here's a profit report for this. Again, th those are numbers in a spreadsheet that they put into something that makes it, that gives them a positive percentage to show a C-suite. C-suite doesn't know or give a fuck about anything. They're there to collect a, a check for the profit that that company is making them. And if that check is not what they want, then they're just going to cut things away from it. Like, mm-mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. people are worried about ai i'm worried about people making dumb decisions based off of like skewed information in uh corporate work environments i don't know what that was for what was it for hey thank you very much for purchasing the dlc what's up benji bring this pto personal time sick time efficiently don't worry about it what are they gonna do Marxists define this as extraction of surplus value. Interesting. You got kids, Raya Lion? You got, are you married? Is to pump those cast towards legs north and turn Cathay into a giant sweaty factory. <laughs> yes! Yes, it is, Kiro! <laughs> I didn't see that you made that comment earlier. Sorry, bro. So we have our convoy. Our convoy... Just at the Cathayan Convoy has a specialization, right? So for in this example here, we can get speed and weapon strength increase for uh, Great Taurus and Lamasu units. And this starts with both, one of each. Or the cannony, cannonry experience. This Lord Convoy has additional war machines. Ammo plus 10 for artillery Lord's Army. And range plus 10% for artillery units in the Hero's Army. Now, some of these will be faction-wide buffs. And none of these are. I think it's the Infernal Iron Sworn one uh, that is that way. But this unit will receive bonuses from this trait, Ice Forge Legion, the Soul of Damnation, and the Hell Cannon. They start with a Hell Cannon and an Infernal Guard. This one's actually very, very good. Which one do we want me to do, though, guys? Cannonry experience or monster? I'll just do a quick one minute poll. Again, I, I always do this just kind of make sure you guys feel like you have onus on the campaign. It's me, not just me pressing buttons. Which convoy? Monsters, cannons. One minute poll, it is up. Go ahead and answer that poll, guys. Real quick, hard and heavy. And I will diatribe about other things that I see in chat. I'm over the oil field construction industries due to the corporate first mentality. All the safety programs are there to reduce corporate. Yeah, 100%. No one gives a fuck about your actual safety. They just don't want you to, to file a workers' comp claim. They don't want you to fire, uh, or, or they don't want you to sue them. No one in corporate 
gives a shit about you. They give a shit about their bottom line and they don't want you to degrade their bottom line by causing them to have any kind of legal fees, anything like that, because those legal fees also go against either their umbrella clause or whatever their insurance clause is, and that goes up. <clears throat> because if there's a bigger scam than uh, corporate America, it's insurance companies. <laughs> Wife, no kids, working on buying our first house this summer. Fucking take the day. Take the day. Go play the game throughout the rest of the day and take your wife on a fucking Friday night, little date night. <clears throat> Go somewhere cool, do a little happy hour, get a little drunk, have a little fun, take a lot of, eat a lot of cheese, be like, I shouldn't have this, my cholesterol, but I'm so bad, and have the fucking cheese, and go home and play with each other's butts. Enjoy your fucking life, man. I have worked too much time behind desks for corporate overlords, and it, it, I thought that's what I did, what I had to do to get ahead. Then I quit my job and I did this and I'm way happier. I don't make the amount of money. <laughs> cannons it is. 13 votes on cannons. And we get to decide where to go. <clears throat> so we can go to the haunted forest and the haunted forest is going to cost us gold, but it's going to give us laborers. Titan's notch is going to give us uh, armaments for gold. Ooh, that's a lot. Uh, that's, I think, it's one of the first times I've seen a um, yeah, depressing cough. <laughs> My allergies are rough right now. Volary is armaments for laborers. Castle Drakenhof is gold for laborers. Armament for labor. None of these are for raw materials. Okay, this is gold for raw materials. For Palace of Ruin, that's far as fuck. Grungzent. The Palace of Ruin is five more turns or four more turns away so we're gonna do the max mount which is a thousand gold and we're gonna dispatch this to grug zint and just like Cathay, we're gonna have dilemmas along the way and on top of that we're gonna get something for reaching our destination just like Cathay. nothing really different there but we're getting a different resource different kind of returns on our investment right we're delivering a certain deliverable to get a certain one back and maximizing your uh, raw materials is pretty crucial at the beginning. No, it does not have the drill mechanic, Gunrunner. That is a Realm of Chaos exclusive one. <sighs> yeah, man, definitely find that better work-life balance, but also just, you know, just, just know that that's always going to be like that in some way, shape, or form. You know, there's always going to be like, we do things a little bit differently here. We're a bit of a family. No, you're not. You're not. You're not a family. You're going to raw dog me the first chance you get. So we're going to increase our rampart, or, uh, tower up to our rampart. Um, so when you take a provincial capital, you have the choice to... Uh, go with a tower which is you know your major your, your uh, massive settlement building but you can also not do that you can also do uh outpost and factory if you want yeah family talk is like we expect you to do a whole lot for near now raya lion subbing up with prime too dude thank you very much <clears throat> favorite unit in this pack Bull centaurs are so good. <laughs> They're so good. Although the Infernal Firestorm are my favorite. Um, someone asked about cost of the DLC. Are, are you in here still? <sighs> the patch. Uh, can you tell if the patch optimized how the game runs? My poor laptop gets a heart attack attempting to run game three, but can run game two very well. Yeah. Oh, very, very. A lot, a lot better FPS. A lot better FPS. Um, I would probably say something like 10, 15 FPS, but the biggest thing is my CPU is at 66 degrees Celsius right now. When I was running, when the game came out, it would, it would hang out around 80 and that's real rough. That's real rough. I don't, I know that's fine for CPUs, but I don't want it to be that, be that high. Let's go ahead and grab... Do we get a bunch of sneaky gits? Or do we go cutthroats? The empire building with a side of villainy and laborer procurement. <laughs> Fight for buying. Said the most companies are just toxic. 100% yin. And I think it's like that because people get to middle to upper management in companies through veterancy versus competency. And I also think that 
the majority of people in middle and upper management were never leaders to begin with. There's a difference. You know, it's like the whole thing between like a leader and a boss and like one leads from the front. If your boss isn't willing to jump in the trenches, trenches with you on crunch time, then he's not a fucking leader. That guy's an asshole. Or that girl's an asshole. That woman's an asshole. Whatever one. Also too, Ryan Lyon, take your day off. And if, like I said, if they want to fire you over you taking time off for yourself, that's not, it's not a company you need to work for. You just believe that if you believe in abundancy, you believe that you will get another job. You know, people that stay unemployed for long periods of time want to be unemployed for long periods of time. Yingvar, I've actually kind of been there. I've also optimized the system so well that I optimized myself out of a job. So it's like really shitty. Like if you're good at your job, they don't want to promote you. Or if you're too good at your job, you've actually made yourself obsolete. <laughs> Sneaky gets to climb walls and back cap shit. They can climb walls? Please also make sure you can afford to live through the chat. Yeah, 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 that too. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm a guy who's talking about, like, quit your job, throw, throw corporate shit to the wind. You also got to pay your rent. <laughs> Banji says, be good enough at your job that, you, that they keep you on, but not good enough that you're irreplaceable. You ain't wrong, brother. They won't ever want to promote you. Infantry can climb walls, I've heard. Oh, okay, they can climb walls. Oh, okay, so just just butt ladders. Got it, okay. So it'll be either gone on the 24th or I have the job still secured. That's fucking scary, dude. Do the right thing and promote the right people. The problem is that there are very few. Be your own boss. Prostitute yourself. <sighs> I was talking to Andy Pry last night. Uh, that guy's an asshole, right? We'll get uh, some sneaky gets after this. Okay, so this guy we're going to do... Wayfinder, so chance of convoy ambush to minus 75%. And then we'll do uh, sale value of cargo. Talking to any part last night. So I, I very much want to create a... Uh, has Dragonfang Mountain? Yeah, Dragonfang Mountain has always been here. This is going to be something. Mark my fucking words. This is going to be a DLC or an FLC or some sort of C. It's something's going here. Because um, I do want to create a video game company. And I want it to be just like super transparent. But I was like, dude, if, if I did, I would hire you as community management. Because I was like, if there's, if there's anyone I know that has no qualms just throwing fisticuffs with just like your YouTube comment troll or, or like typical Reddit poster. <laughs> What are you, Smog, you're not going to be, you think you're going to be the community manager? No, absolutely not. You, my friend, are in concept. You're going to be over there helping with the systems. You're working behind the scenes to make sure that our systems make sense and they're not arbitrary numbers. Don't even sure fine okay me. You know, you know where you'll be. You fucking COO is what you'll be. <laughs> um, but, dude, Indy has no qualms, just throw in the fisticuffs he will put you in your place no matter where the place is if it's over chat if it's in a comment if it's over discord if it's on reddit he'll just fucking throw it and i think the big problem is uh, uh at sneaky gets or punish our forces Psh, sneaky gets um a lot of companies kind of get in hot water where they just don't support their community staff and it's like okay if my community manager wants to like throw down and say some say some shit fine i'm just gonna support it like um, oh, someone was asking how docs works. There you go for docs. There's also technology for docs too. Here you go. Does that help out for the question on docs? <laughs> I don't even want it to be constructive or, or good. I want Indy. I want to, I want to basically go Indy. Stop Indy. No, sit Indy. Sit. Unhook the fucking leash and have them just just consume. Because I think a big problem with like 
the toxic relationship between consumer and company is that companies use too much corporate speak and they don't have like very strong community managers that can stand on their own. They're very often hung out to dry whenever they overstep their bounds and, and companies go, don't say anything. Or they go, that is not our belief system. Like short of indie pride saying something like bigotry or racism, I would support it. I would be like, yep, sorry, that's our stance. And if you don't like it, then do not buy our game. And I think too, that a lot of companies won't take stances like that. They're like, well, that hurts our bottom line. It's like, no, if I have, if our company says we have like a way that we approach things, we have to stick to it. We can't just waffle around when someone makes an angry Twitter post. It's ephemeral. It just disappears into the void in like eight days anyway. And the more you kind of give credence to it, the more it happens. I've, I've watched it happen with World of Warcraft. I've watched the game go from just like the way it was to just being super diluted. And every single month was a different build of the month with one class being super overpowered because everyone bitched about it. Yeah, that's another thing too. But I think that the legal trouble comes from Usually people that are not specialized in communication, as Smog and I have had this conversation about many times, overstepping their bounds and over communicating or over promising. And I think it's like if you trust the person not to do those things, and as long as they don't do those things, then you just support them. And if they do do those things, you say, well, they were wrong there, but everything else is pertinent. Like, that's the problem is that there's no real support for those people. And they're kind of just, they're, they're told to do their jobs and they don't, they don't really get support. I thought I could actually attack here. Likely to purchase from a company with a backbone that doesn't back down from beliefs, stance on matters, have to stop giving into super soft culture that I've been witnessing for the last several years. Yeah, you know, like... Where are you? Where are you? They're over here. Where are they? This, this is them? That's them, right? Screw that. Like I said, a, it, I make... If, if I have a video game company, it's my job to make video games. I shouldn't have political or social stances on stuff outside of like a certain purview, right? Like, like let's, let's be, let's allow certain things under that umbrella that are not truly political and social, right? Like, um, blatant racism. Let's just take a look at that or any kind of true bigotry that just shouldn't exist. You know, that, that's not taking a stance. That's just saying like, yeah, you know what? We're not cool with that. Um, but I think kind of kowtowing in either direction is a problem. Yeah, who, human rights in it. Yeah, there you go, Colgate. <laughs> and I think that it's too often that it just becomes, you lose the genuineness or you lose like the actual true people wanting to rally behind a cause because it's like, you've just made a marketing slogan out of it. And that sucks. Low die. I used to work for a startup company and startup companies are like, if you're awake, you're working. <laughs> I, uh, and I, I, I drank that Kool-Aid. I was hard in the paint on it, man. Hypothetical companies stance on breast milk, the true issues. Uh, I'm for it. All about it. Uh, break room will be supplied with an ample amount of pure Cambodian breast milk. <laughs> Ooh, this is kind of rough, actually. Like, I'm stuck in this valley of doom. Oh, God. This is, this is one of the worst maps I've ever seen. So we kind of have to, like... You see what sucks, though, about gunpowder it doesn't really it doesn't ever really seem to work up and down it just works down like i think if like i put these guys here they won't shoot let's see how this works i'm gonna try to do like okay put these guys in the valley hobgobbles behind yeah we're going further back to try and use this this little slope here chaos dwarfs at the edge of the valley God, dude, that's rough and tumby. And then these guys over here. Yeah, 
Oh. The lore is terrible. We're on Cinder Powers, so I'm managing right now. Transparency is the best policy that I have and works really good. Dude, 100%! Transparency is the way you gotta do it. So, uh. Yeah, it's something that would tell you that, that unit's fire is obstructed would be really, really helpful. I totally agree with you on that. Yeah, no, I, I knew the I put the good eye over here. I knew what I was doing that time around. Are they not moving? Of course, why would they? I mean, I wouldn't move too if I was in the best possible starting position in this fucking map. Probably waiting for their bros. I'm going to fast forward to see if that changes things. Um, I, I don't think this is under an NDA. And it's not like I said anything bad anyway. So when I when I applied and interviewed and got the job for CA, um, they asked me like, "What's one thing you would change about our company?" Um, and I said transparency. Uh, we are on like turn seven or, or eight rock. Uh, uh, and I and I noted the uh, the Norska situation as like a prime example, saying that like you know what happened there. Okay, let's slow everything down now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Uh, what happened there? You know, rather than just kind of being transparent with what happened and what was wrong, it took you guys quite a few amount of months to really kind of get that conversation going. And people were upset up until that conversation happened. And had that conversation just been done initially, I think that um, people would have accepted that that was the case. They would have been okay with it. And they would have just moved on and they would have been excited to see it all change in due time. And I think that, that having that that dialogue, that honest dialogue of what's going wrong with the game creates trust with the developer. And I think that you guys kind of unfortunately squandered a chance to really build some really cool trust there. And they're like, oh, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good hot take. I don't want to get involved with those guys. Get these over here though. Let's get this over here. Get that right into them. Uh, LU, shoot into this. But I think a lot of companies want to say that they're transparent. I want to say that they're working on transparency, but just don't actually want to do it because it, it does require. It's kind of scary. You're breaking the the usual mold of the way you do things. Um, and that and there's no there's no playbook for it, right? You know, you're you're transparent. There's no fallback. And I I just don't think that companies have realized that that's the best way to do things. Because no one's going to fault you for just saying, oh, okay, that, that's the way it is. That's the honest truth. Okay, we, we have to accept it. There's no other alternative, right? I don't want them to, I want them to stay on the hill. And you guys can all shoot in here. This is so messy, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> Dude, the last guns are just so sick. Sweep the foothills. Lucky that my team lead, team lead plus a regional manager has our teams back in like a, other departments. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's another thing is having like, 
Uh, Ying, it's going to be at the end of the stream. So if you want to pop out for a little bit, uh, we'll be streaming. It's 11.30 a.m. my time. We'll be streaming until 2 p.m. So feel free to go ahead and step away, my man. Uh, one of the big things I learned in the old retail world was no matter what, <clears throat> even if they're wrong, you should support your team. Because if you don't, if you hang them out to dry, and, and within reason, right? Like, like uh, instances of it would have been like, hey, you know, we promised, uh, we incorrectly promised certain certain things in a um, maybe a pre-order or something like that. Because I worked at a GameStop. Whatever it is, you know what? I'm actually gonna go more cutthroats. I, I like the cutthroats more than the sneaky get. I think the sneaky get are fun and goofy, but I think that they're kind of. I think that they just kind of fall flat. Um, but if you support your team, you build like a level of trust where that team is kind of like impervious to a lot of bullshit. And if you don't support your team, then they will do things that are off the top. Like just like, oh man, I didn't expect him to do that shit because he didn't trust me. It's like, if the trust doesn't exist, they're just going to kind of be rogue. I saw GameStop said that the lack of games is what hurting their business model. Well, they're, what's hurting their business model is that... Never mind. <laughs> so, this is now the Tower of Tsar. Yeah, uh, Iconic, it's why I always say we. Good bosses socialize wins and take on losses i.e. if a mistake is made, I'm sorry, that's my fault, versus using we when it comes to wins or taking on tasks. Yeah, like, like the the corporate programming that kind of gets into your brain is very much like, we all, you, you say we for everything. We are doing this, we are doing that, even if it's you alone on a team. That's why sometimes when you'll hear my videos, I'll say, uh, Let's get started on our video. It's just me making it. I ain't got a team. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> yeah, the different shield icon is part of the uh, quality of life update. The, the the royal we, the collective me. Now he's a now he's a large part of the team, but he is passed out right now. Yeah, bud, you sleepy. Another loyal devotee. Torps are good, CK two three two three one one. Capt Hedge, thanks for thanks for following. Guys, if you do have a Prime membership you haven't used, please go ahead and use it on me. So. Oh, a Kona Shame emote? No, but you got some brand new emotes. Check those new emotes out. Courtesy of Rune, my bros. Look at this. Dude, look at this guy. Look at this dude. Look at that guy. He's so good. Look at this. He's so good. Look at those new emotes. <laughs> no, my dude. Thank you for subbing up with Prime, my, my dude. So here's how the Tower of Tsar works in a quick little, uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys saw this and we've, we've seen it throughout the whole like ramp up with the DLC. Um, that's why I kind of, I put out my video knowing it wouldn't get like the best views today because we just kind of know all that stuff, right? We know what's coming up the campaign. It's just a real deep dive, explain a lot of the things that I've learned. Um, but how the, this works is. You cannot usurp seats from anyone. The cost per seat goes up as more seats are filled and the district amount, the, so the bonus here for the district is a Chaos Dwarf faction-wide buff across all of the Chaos Dwarf factions. So if I inhabit this one and then the AI inhabits these three, we all get this bonus. But whoever individually holds the seats is who gets the bonus for the seat. So. 
it boosts the entire faction. It's a race-wide buff. It's probably a better way to say it, not faction-wide buff. Because I look at, like, it's the Chaos Dwarf race, and I'm playing the faction of the Legion of Asgore. Asgore. Um, but you need to hold... What is it? It's two... See, what, what, uh, uh, uh. When all seasons are unlocking two districts, I, I was like, it's two districts, not seats. So yeah, once you get two districts completed, again across you and all the other factions, then you go up to tier two, and then you have three seats, then up to tier three, which is two seats. Lastly, you have the conclave at the very top, which you then will um, confederate one of these four. So you have um, Astragoth over here, you have Zatan over here, or Zarnagran itself. Zarnagran is the easy pick. Is the easy pick. It's a tier 5, um, 10 slot capital that's already stocked to the max right now. So it is, it is it's like the easy pick. You don't get the other legendary lords, but... I mean, damn, man. This this thing is so nice. It's a really good economic buff. Uh, buff. So what I think we're going to go with here, though, is this. Armaments cost minus 10% for all unit capacity upgrades in the Hellforge. That stacks with his innate 10%. So now we're 20% reduced in armaments cost across the board for every single unit. I think it's the best the best call for Drazoeth. Can you only pick one of the three? Conf I don't remember. Or no, for that matter. I've never gotten that high. Uh, I could ask Indy, but I don't think Indy's gotten that high either. Here, I'll take a screenshot. Does does this lock out after you pick one, or can you pick all three with the respective six hundred? Maybe the conclave cost goes up. I would assume maybe the conclave it's six hundred conclave to do one of these. So that's that's a pretty steep cost. It's like I've said like a million times, Mukiwa. The Chaos Dwarf DLC is so good that it makes the dwarf so bad. And you can drink whatever amount of copium you want. The dwarf campaign is shit on a stick. It is boring. You can't sit there and play that campaign and go, wow, I'm so content with this campaign after looking at the Chaos Dwarf mechanics. The Chaos Dwarf mechanics, half of them should be added to the dwarf mechanics. Convoys, they should exist. The Hellforge shouldn't necessarily be the Hellforge in that it increases unit caps of the dwarfs, but maybe that Forge does something to make it so that you can create weapons to send those out to other factions, just like the dwarfs did throughout all of their lore. The dwarfs are so known with like creating these mythical, awesome pieces of armor or weaponry for all the many races of men and elf that it's that would be amazing. That would be so cool. Like the underway system I talked about where, okay, if you... Uh, no, the DLC is awesome, Mac. It is so good. Um, we're going to claim this seat because I want that armament cost. Where, okay, you can do expeditions into the underway and clear out parts of the underway. But as you do that, you either come through a place that is, okay, you can't go through this. Or um, this is going to grant you either money or maybe it gives you access to a resource of a vein that, that was that was hidden all these times. Like... The underway should be a much better, cooler, and more wide-sweeping mechanic because there are books about what the dwarfs do in the underway and how the underway is constantly patrolled and how they're constantly seeking to reave, pave, and reconnect portions of the former Karazankor. Like, instead, the underway is a stance. Womp, womp, boring. Yeah, it's not that the it's not that their their campaign is bad. It's just that it is terrible by contrast. That's a better way to put it, probably. It's their love lair. <laughs> uh, Saffron, you do not miss the giveaway. No, they're not too OP. They're they're adequately cost effective for what they are. That. Nothing in the Chaos Dwarf roster is OP because it's either balanced by extreme cost 
or uh, some sort of unicap, whatever it is. Like, where is it? There it is. No! Like, bull renders? Dude, these kind of, I, I can only ever have 10. That's the max I get for all three of the unit type in the campaign. So I can never have more than that. So if I had three armies, I can't doom stack them. Like, not, not truly, right? I can't have a full 20. <sighs> I, I think they're, they're perfect. I think it's very well balanced. You know, Benji, I'd always thought it'd been really cool if they had done almost like a like a Heroes of Might and Magic. Um, no worries, no Nomad. Um, I think it'd have been really cool if they had done a Heroes of Might and Magic kind of thing where you go into the underway and there's an actual like under map, just like Heroes of Might and Magic. I love that system. Let's go ahead and go... Local control here. This costs raw materials and I don't want to do that just yet. I want to build up more raw materials. It could be shattered. I thought that I thought that that was the limitation on them, but either way, still it cost me a lot to get beyond this point. You might be right. Actually, I think I need I need to twenty. Let's take a look. Let's watch Every Indy Pride's really bad video. Nineteen stack of destroyers or dragons. Oh, Indy Pride, worst content creator known to man. Uh, he has nine in this video. Yeah, six plus three is uh, no. He has eleven. He has eleven. I'm there's a, even he adds them up. So yeah, you can go beyond ten. Either way, there is still a unit cap, and you have to do the unit cap. Would you trim down if it meant they would deck? I dedicate more to the underway. What would you trim down? I'd give her the book of grudges. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the, I think the book of grudges grudges is. I think it's the book of cringiest. It's 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 just such a boring. It's such a boring thing about the dwarfs for me. Let's go on the book. Okay, add another page. What are you gonna do about it? You know, like. I think the the the. The sake, the the fact that dwarfs have grudges and have an animosity, and they never forget, is inherent in both Lord of the Rings and Warhammer Dwarfs. But the fact that there is a big old book about it, and the book never really gets complete, and more and more pages are added, it's like, okay, cool, like, and then that it made itself as like a really watered down mechanic into the game. Okay, again, cool. There's there's like fifty other cooler things about the dwarfs. A grudge should just be a short-term bonus against the race. Like, Dude, that would be actually really cool. You use Oath Gold to, to uh, satisfy the grudge. Like, okay, Oath Gold has got uh, different tiers of the grudge, right? Uh, satisfy a minor gripe, a, a, a grudge, or a major grudge. You use that Oath Gold and it gives you 10 or 5, 10, 15 turn bonus against said faction because that's the one you're going to war with. That'd be a way better way to do it than have my campaign be pulled in 19 different directions because I have to deal with a bunch of random bullshit of the grudges doing certain things and I got to appease the long beards. It's just not a fun mechanic. I think if it was just done like that, it'd be really cool. Yeah, the piece in, that's uh, this is no good. It's a no good. Okay, we need more laborers. <laughs> On that note, we need more slaves. I think... I. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that, like, if we want some of those mechanics, it's it, it, there's a cost attached to it. It's hard for them to to fix things that already exist because it costs them money to do so. And if they already, my camera's getting wonky. What what do you mean, my bro? Is it getting like choppy? Am I not moving smooth anymore? Looks smooth on my end. Deactivate. Activate. It sometimes happens with certain parts of the map. Uh, 
I don't even have a hallway light. It's just, it's just the lighting. I got two lights on my monitors that blast at me. And I have another mon another light over here as a fill light. It doesn't do the best job. Would I rather lose 10 pounds of fat or five or gain five pounds of muscle? Well, I've lost a hundred pounds of fat. <laughs> so, uh, I'd rather gain the muscle though. Um, okay, so we need to get more laborers. That means going over here and taking things. And Karak Crack Ten is the next location, I think. Would you eat ten pounds of fat? Yeah, I've I've had prime rib before. How materials per turn? But workload increases. Why is our efficiency so low? Oh, it's because our control is so. Shit. Oh, we can go there. Do you guys want me to go? Do you guys want me to go up to Cathay? I don't know. Or do we go to the Ivory Road? Should I go take the? I should probably go take the Haunted Forest. I don't think there's any. There's no real point to doing it, though. I suppose. I haven't even done this. Hey, nope. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go swing on Gorst over here. And I, honestly, I don't even think we hold the haunted forest. What do you guys think? I think we just raise this to the ground. <clears throat> what did someone say about Italian assembly? <laughs> I would upgrade this, but it increases our workload, and we need to kind of hold off on that for a little bit. Hey, Tech, thank you for cheering one bit. How do you like this DLC? I love it, dude. I absolutely love the DLC. Absolutely love it, my bro. A wise decision. A wise decision. Intensity, intensity. Ugoth, Ugoth's not down here. This isn't Immortal Empires. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is sack the city for laborers. They don't, Felix. There's no rifts for them. Okay. Oh, we're f <laughs> we're fighting that battle. Close victory? Really? We think so? I'm thinking not. Murder train. Thomas's little tank engine's coming to town. He means business. I mean, yeah, I have some cool... I have really cool ideas for things I'd love to see change in the game. But uh, it's not It's not a moral empire. This is the Realm of Chaos. We're trying to get the Realm of Chaos campaign objective done here. Quickly so we can do Immortal Empire Zatan. Um, I, I think, honestly, like... Do I have a lot of cool ideas for the game? Yeah, but I don't work at the company, so I don't know what that cost is really like. I think it's really easy for me to say, why can't they just do this? I understand that there is a cost attached to those things that I want done to the game, and I understand too that that cost is, is, a, is a barrier. And the unfortunate thing about it is that if we want any cool sweeping game one improvements it unfortunately has to come with a price tag and that sucks and they're going to use that as they'd rather i'm sure they'd rather just say well why don't we just improve new races or add things to the game and you know that doesn't necessarily f fix the problems right there's still issues that's a bit of a great let's actually go over here oh yeah <clears throat> It doesn't really <clears throat> make things better, but it's kind of just the reality of the situation. I'm going to pop these guys over here and over here to, to intercept the, the dwarfs, the not dwarfs, the saber tooth tigers. <sighs> like, I think if we, if we realistically want like a game one thing, it has to come with a game one DLC of some sort. 
they can fix stuff when they release a new DLC. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, if they did a, a DLC for the faction. Like, if they did... I, I really want them to do, like, a Legendary Lord pack that is just Legendary Lords. Like, hey, uh, Elves of Renown. And it adds to the game a bunch of uh, Legendary Lords for Elves or a bunch of legend Like, all Elves. Uh, Dark Elves, High Elves, and Wood Elves. Like, I, I would pay for it. Like, hey, here's an $8 DLC, and it's going to add uh, Core Hill, it's going to add uh, Corrin Darkhand, and it's going to add Araloth. Sick. I'm all for it. And we're also going to improve each one of those factions. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I think Boris could have a dedicated pack. I think uh, Middenheim is probably coming as a pack. We are going to get an Empire representation in Warhammer 3. It is the most played faction in the game. Uh, I'm under an NDA for that rock until uh, next week. Without breaking the NDA, I can tell you that from what you read in that blog, is it something you're terribly interested in? I mean, it's possible. I don't think we need any more goddamn vampire accounts, though. Oh, Boris, not Todd. Flock of Doom actually does quite a bit of damage there. Oh, get mulched, baby. Oof, that raked up the side of my- Oh my god! They're on a hill and they're still just getting ripped. I should have started further down the hill. It's not going to be good for my units. Oof, sorry bros. There goes half your fucking strength. Stop shooting, stop shooting. For the love of god, stop shooting. Really gotta use those blunderbusts care carefully, man. Stop that. <sighs> Flock of Doom is doing quite a bit of damage for a unit with 85 armor, you know what I mean? But usually it's better for lower for lower army. It's really good now. It's even better. Lower armor armies. Like I never thought to do flock of doom on a on like dwarfs, period. Chaos or otherwise. Oh. We just need more laborers, so I'm going to take the laborers here. Oh, you know what? I wasn't thinking I should have done replenishment. Damn it. Whoopsies. Now let's move over here. Holy shit. I don't even know how... That's only a tier two. Ooh, that's a rough tier two, man. What is your opinion on a race pack for Dono or Dogs of War Southern Realms? I, I would love to see it. <sighs> um, semi modded Raya. I don't like any kind of like total conversion mods or anything like that. Um, but I do really like quality of life, graphical mods, stuff like that. Dude, this is actually. 
yeah, no SFO, no Grim Hammer, uh, a Radius mod, all those. Is not, it's not my bag. Not a fan of those at all. Uh, here, I'll turn on my mod list. And yeah, mod list should work. There you go. There's my mod list. Most of those are not active right now. Yeah, we're, this is not looking... I mean, it's a bunch of just like... It's a bunch of undead chaff. I'll probably be fine, right? But that's basically three stacks. Or two, two, two and a half stacks. Well, I'm not at war with them. So that's kind of an issue. I don't know, bros. What do you think? Should I go to Krak Krakatin instead? Or just double down to go to the Haunted Forest? Maybe do I declare war with them? Oh, yeah. So this has got flaming damage. He can increase flaming damage to everything. And then all this shoots flaming shots. Oh, these don't shoot flaming shots. These guys shoot flaming shots. But these Hobgoblin archers are, are flaming shots. I might, you know what, I might just swap this guy out for another Hobgoblin Archer. I feel like the hob, the Hobgoblin Archer is going to help me more than the Sneaky Gits. Fuck him up. It's just zombies and skeletons is what it looks like. Stronghold Syndrome, I love that. I wish you could do this. I wish I could go click, shift click and see what that upkeep is like that ex that that specific portion of upkeep so this is 75 times 3 which is um it's not 150 it's not 150 it's 225 225 250 give or take and then uh three four five six fifty So just over 1,000 gold, so I'd reduce that by 100. Basically, I get one of these units for free. That army's an egg. <sighs> uh, what do you guys think we should do? Do we attack? Do I go to war with the haunted forest and have them attack me? Or do I jump over here to uh, crack Krakatin? Chances of him actually about to like range out against me are pretty high. If he has a full stack and then he's building up a second stack, he's probably about to go to war with me anyway. Ardugal. <clears throat> I'm going to move back away from his front just in case there's some tomfoolery going on and then I'll do this because we can't ambush we're, we're out of movement anyway so we should declare war let's hope well I should have just waited a turn <laughs> god damn God damn! So every set amount of turns, the resources will change across what's going on here. By the way. Why is that red? Oh, I just guess we're losing it. Hydrate I shall. Hydrate I shall, Rock Lurk. Think and a posture check. Oh no. It's begun. I'm waiting one more turn because I want to upgrade the drill. So we'll do that. Hydrator diorite. How many view how many uh bros we got checking in here today? Guys, if you do ooh, I could even auto-resolve this one. 
<laughs> I'd auto resolve and I'd lose all the units that don't matter. <laughs> so yeah, this this should be pretty fun. Lots of corpse carts to take care of. We're gonna have to kill those. Oh, these are immune contact effects. Is that from him? I mean, honestly, we could probably snipe out. Give it. Uh, we could probably even snipe him out. So let's have some fun. Guys, if you have not yet pre-ordered your... Uh, not? Well, yeah, if you're not yet pre-ordered the game, you can do so using uh, this this uh, CA link right there. CA link right there. Uh, 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 purchase. Uh, let me get that for you. <laughs> Whoopsies. I wasn't even going to say that. Here you go. There you go. You can use that link right there. And it does. Hey, J Rago with a hydrate. But what I was going to say was <clears throat> if you have a Amazon Prime membership you have not yet used, please feel free to use it on me. I would love that very much. Well, I know what I'll be doing here. I mean, it's a pretty steep hill. Yeah, this is my full-time job, so you throwing those uh, prime memberships at me is absolutely huge. Uh, I don't remember the seed changes in 2.2, to be honest with you, man. Like, I don't really know what they did or changed at all, really. Do that. The Kadai will stay in the back and deal with anything that gets summoned up. Then they'll rip to the front and help out there. You two will be right there, and then the laborers will be in the very front. That actually might be a better call. Just do that. Use use the laborers to kind of shore up flank. And that way they're kind of really stuffed up into this firing line. I mean, look at this, look at this hill. I couldn't I couldn't have asked for a better a better vantage point now. But I have really bad news. <clears throat> I desperately need to poop. Yeah, you, you nailed it, Crimson Heart. <laughs> I gotta poop. So, I'll give you guys a cool little thing to watch. I'll be right back. It was, Jirago. And I, you know what? I've just been so enraptured with this, I haven't had a chance to really take a look at those patch notes. Um, so I'll be right back. I'm going to poop real quick before we do this so that I'm not, like, panicking through it. Because um, I'm starting to get that, like, top butt sweat where you're like, hey, your swamp ass is kicking in, buddy. If you don't do this now, you're going to have it in your pants. So I'll be right back.
an earnest disciple. steadfast support. A wise decision. <clears throat> what up, General Vibes? How you doing, dude? Okay, I wish I was super efficient at pooping. Don't poop in socks. What the hell's going on here? Okay, we are good to go. Let's go ahead and I think this is a good setup here. 
Uh, we got our back line of Fireborn. We got our arc, or uh, not archers, our, our range, then our archers in the front. Everything should have enough range to kind of shoot into stuff. I'm a little worried about these blunderbusses just shooting down and into my stuff still. We'll see how it works. I think it'll, you know what, I might actually just do this. Just give him a little bit of room here. Not much. But just enough to kind of like open up that arc. I'm actually going to probably reposition him a little bit better too. <sighs> Let's have fun. And we're going to hang out. We're not going to move. We're going to let them come to us. They attack, so hopefully they'll just kind of ramp up the, the way at us. <clears throat> Uh, guns are squared. I mean, they're pretty square. You want them even more square? Yeah, no artillery yet, unfortunately. In Immortal Empires, he starts with a, a Dreadquake Mortar. <clears throat> a Dreadquake Mortar thing. Are they not coming? This, this, that can't, that, that can't. I, I will, I'll go throw these goblin laborers to the wind if that's going to be the case. <clears throat> it's a long square, also known as a rectangle. Oh, there we go. Oh, I've I've heard of poop sock. I was just like, you guys are disgusting for the poop sock. Do I, I, I was born in WoW, molded by it. You know nothing of WoW. Really? That was my back hair, huh? Oh, I think that's thing got in range so quickly. This guy is gonna get not gonna have a good time here. Where's Gorsty Poo? Oh, he's way back there, dude. We could probably get a good, uh... Not really many good shots here. I don't even know how far out this thing can reach. Let's see how that goes. It's probably not going to go too well. <clears throat> Watch this overcast. I'm going to go ahead and cast this. And then we're going to overcast right onto him. So the... Oh man, where is he going? Never mind. Well, the overcast is going to shoot three balls out. Oh, and it's going to go into my own forces there. Ooh! You got thunder blasted. No, over there like that. <sighs> no, what are you doing? Three out. Boom, boom, and boom. Taking that. Okay, Infernal Castellian, you're in hold. Okay, so I want you to shoot here. I want you. I keep doing that. Shoot him too, please. Oh, 
And that's going to slow him down, and he's going to really take a lot of damage now. <clears throat> Watch it just getting chunked apart. Oh, goodbye, Gorst. Goodbye, Gorst. He's taking more damage because of so many things right now. No! I lost my Kadai. Alright, I wasn't too worried about that, I guess. I, I kept watching them, I was like, oh, they seem fine, and then they just died. Clear him out. Oh! I put those guys over there thinking they would be a little bit more effective at clearing that stuff, but... Yeah, kind of not a big fan of those Kadai. They, they really need more of their buffs. Finally, the thing is, army, army loss is going to kick in. <clears throat> we got beat up, but we we limped our way through it. A 
steadfast supporter. The red AoE it grants uh, slows them down and makes it they take more damage. I mean, they got 212 kills, which is cool, but unfortunately we lost the Fireborn. It is what it is. Um, I'm probably going to go with the laborers. Well, our economy is back at 100%. Uh, we did get 200 laborers just for fin winning that fight. <clears throat> Maybe we're punishment here? Um, the, it's not a map-wide Mortis Engine effect, Kiro. It's a 35 meter, meter radius effect. Oh. There you go. So this is 8% replenishment, 750 treasury, and 240 laborers on top of the 200 laborers we're getting right now just by winning this fight. <clears throat> yeah, the vamps are going to come probably come at us pretty hard and heavy. Uh, but 8% doesn't really feel like much. The nice thing is this entire army is gone, right? Like, I don't have to worry about going and mopping any of them up, which is the nice thing about fighting vampires. Uh, yeah, that 8% doesn't look, in, not looking too sexy. So I think we go with, uh, transport captives, right? you replenishment. Wait, what? Mm-hmm. It doesn't, you don't get like actual laborers for it. <sighs> 1,000 for man eater units, or just, uh, well, yeah, we'll get the man eaters, why not? Win eight battles for the Graven Scepter. Okay. So we got poison attacks just for him, unfortunately. It's okay. It's not going to be good until we get uh, Cinder Breath. So, we shall level him up. <clears throat> I mean, I do feel like we have a lot of leadership issues with our little piece of shit guys. What's the best call here? Maybe Burning Wrath again, or I think maybe we're trying to push into Hellhammer. I think had we had Flame of Asgore and Hell or Hellhammer, we would have really been able to win that fight quickly. Not having any kind of artillery is kind of rough. Um... Get the hero, uh, the hero gobble buffing machine. I don't, I actually don't know how to get him. <laughs> I'm going to get a curse of hashit just to have it. Uh, one, two, three, this is four. Okay, now evasion's unlocked. Um, <clears throat> I might get inspiring presence just for this effect. Leadership for him. Hmm. 
<laughs> and yielding command though is not good. It's not bad at all though. Yeah, most of them don't have uh, quests out in battles anymore. Period. <clears throat> The punishment wouldn't be terrible. It does max out at 6% though only. Um, since we don't have a planet, yeah, let's go with logistics. So we'll do that just for a little bit better replenishment. And let's increase, uh, we can't unfortunately increase, let's increase our warriors here. Uh, 104, well, let's just do it. We'll get another warrior in this army. Uh, we could probably combine these. There we go. <clears throat> and I'm just going to disband this one. I'd rather just spend the 500 to get another one. Uh, let's give him... Cinderblast Shell and Stabilized Bipod. Stabilized Bipod is going to give him Dig In. And then this is going to give him this really cool uh, single target shot, which is really nice. Which is lovely. Uh, and put this guy into encampment stance. Really? That maintained an army? That's usually not like that. <clears throat> Let's build this. So I don't know what unit, I, I, I kind of feel like the right call here is to get this online, the ironworks, but it costs 250 armaments and we're not going to have that anytime soon. Um, not even in the slightest. We could go this for some more money. We could go this for some campaign movement range increase in control. Uh, I'm open to whatever you guys think though. What are you guys thinking here? We do need some control, which is really kind of a concern. Ooh. I mean, this is only one control, though. That's my problem. We need way more than one control. <clears throat> tower has a plague oh it's just a it's an event plague okay never mind I thought it was an actual plague um, let's do some civic stuff now yeah tallest tower for some control So our, our armament production is only at 11. That's the problem too. Uh, factories is how we do that. So scrap towers, we would need to go here to have raw materials turned into armaments, which we will do. <clears throat> I just wanted to upgrade that drill so we can get that portion of the, of the campaign going. I... There are three green skin buffs that are low tech tier. <clears throat> Here. For upkeep reduction and melee attack. This is Hobgoblin. This is we there's these three, like pretty much that. This would be melee defense, leadership, unit experience gain, uh upkeep and melee attack would be all of those. <clears throat> 
What are you doing? You get your ball? You cute bubs. Yeah, those are the three big ones. Well, the two big ones. Uh, sacrificial bats, sacrifice, sorry, sacrifice for Zar Nagran, labor action, additional conclave influence plus five. Then this is labor quotes for laborers, for rush labor cost. Yeah, 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 yeah. The total war tech? <clears throat> Max active Hellforge Forgecraft options. How do you like the... I love it, Arch Archangelus. It makes the game like not so like cookie cutter. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, do we go with this route? I can click this. We can just kind of jump through these to get these two. An increase to basically all of our hobgoblins and our laborers in both of these. Um, or we go into like tallest towers to get some control on campaign line of sight. What do you guys think? 